dark brown eyes, um, they would uh, they would take the cow and put Daisy a, a Daisy necklace around her so that she was the true Elsie. What a beautiful cow she was. Um, production at the Walker Gordon Dairy closed in 1971. Um, there was also here at the Plainsboro Preserve, the McCormick Sanding Gravel. The operations began here in 1969. They were digging in this quarry for sand and gravel for some of the major construction booms that were going on in the tri-state area. Uh, the construction all ended in 1974 or the mining operations ended then. But it was a long process of what they were trying to do, getting all of that sand and gravel out, taking it by rail up to upstate New Jersey and into New York City. It was expensive. And then they hit a spring. So the quarry began to fill in. They had to pump the water out. All of these combined expenses caused them to shut down. And when they stopped pumping, this is what happened. This is Lake McCormick. It is the, the cornerstone of the property here. It's a home to so many different types of wildlife. We have the typical, you know, you would see geese and you would see cormorants. You'll see great blue herons and you'll see swallows going over the water, catching mosquitoes, even bats flying about. Um, but you can also find beavers here at the preserve and otters too. It's pretty exciting. There's another beautiful shot of Lake McCormick. And one of everyone's favorite points was uh, Maggie's point. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But the properties that were the different farms and the mining operation, these areas all combined to a really unique cooperative effort. Um, Middlesex County Parks and the township of Plainsboro started adding lands to this preserve. It grew and grew and grew. And now this property is 1,000 acres. It's extraordinary. And uh, in 2001, New Jersey Audubon started leasing the property to do environmental programs here. In 2003, we opened the Rush Holt Environmental Education Center. It's quite a unique place and really worth coming out to see. There are five miles of trails going through different types of habitats. You can go from a beautiful open field to a forest in just a short walk. There are marshes and swamps and wetlands and of course Lake McCormick, but all of the diverse habitat does create a great wildlife spectacle. There's so many different types of animals here. Uh, this is one of the most popular points at the end of one trail. You go down to Maggie's Point and she sticks out right in the middle of the lake. So people like to sit there and enjoy the surroundings. It's really lovely. Uh, and it music. appears like some of these trails are actually loops. So it's even more convenient. I mean, you're making the whole loop trail makes it a lot easier walking. You know, you're going to start and stop at the same place, you know. Yes. And it's quite beautiful too. The, the trails are all easy to moderate difficulty. There's no difficult terrain. Uh, some of the trails are, um, are designed for people to be immersed out in the wild. And some of them are a little closer to the building with cute little stops for kids along the way. It's really a great place. Uh, so New Jersey Audubon doing our programming here, we have a twofold mission. It's to connect people to nature and to steward the nature of today for the people of tomorrow. Uh, we have education outreach, we have public policy and advocacy, we have stewardship, and we have research and monitoring. We really work hard to get people to appreciate what's around them. New Jersey is a beautiful place. So there are five staffed centers for New Jersey Audubon and the Plainsboro Preserve is one that's right in the center of the, of the state. We're right here in Middlesex County. It's not a far drive from anywhere. We're just a little bit off of Route 130, not far from exit 8A of the New Jersey Turnpike, but you wouldn't know it when you're here. You'll be completely immersed in nature with no one else around. And many people know New Jersey Audubon is a great organization for coming out to do bird walks. We do have some people that lead Sorry, that's my clock going off in the background. Excuse the loons. 
So we do have people that will host some birding walks. Um, we'll see our eagle that's frequenting the lake here. It's nesting probably about two and a half miles away. Um, we've also seen nests of many kinds, including little gnat catchers. Um, we have lots of birds because of all the different habitats that we have and the native plantings that we have. It attracts birds. Plus, we also put out a lot of feeders to try and attract more birds too, including hummingbird feeders. Uh, it's kind of exciting though, because the hummingbirds tend to go more to our gardens than they go to the feeders. We have many native plant gardens and we try and encourage people to do some of that gardening in their own yards. So we plant things that will attract hummingbirds and pollinators and support wildlife. But then we also have twice a year, we host a plant sale just to try and get people to be able to do the same in their own yards. Um, we'll sell plants and tell people where it can be planted and if it's going to attract the things they're hoping to bring into their yard. Uh, here at the preserve, we do have plenty of school groups coming, though not since 2020. We have not been doing schools too much yet. Um, I've done a few Zoom programs for schools and sent some videos, mostly about frog adaptations. That's one of my favorite subjects. Um, but we also do summer camps. This year we have a nature summer camp that's filling up really well because people are so tired of being in front of the computer. They want their kids outside and we will get them out and we will have them play in nature. We will have them experiencing different things and we will have them getting dirty. That's part of being out in nature sometimes. Maybe not as dirty as this young lady, but maybe they will be. Uh, we also have plenty of other nature programs that we host for people. We host programs all year long, but we do tend to do more programs in the spring and autumn because we have a cooperation going on with the Township of Plainsboro, where we are here staffing the building from April through October. And then in November, the Township of Plainsboro takes over the building from November through March. So it's a great cooperation. We do have plenty of reptiles on the property and you'll see me go ahead and pick them up because very fortunate for me, we have no venomous snakes in this area of New Jersey. So I love to pick up snakes and teach people about them because they're underappreciated and beautiful. And some of the reptiles that we have here are endangered species as well. So we like to keep our species of concern on top on our mind. Um, we like to encourage people to come out different times of day too, because there are so many moths here at the preserve. If you set up, um, if you set up some sheets with bright lights shining on them outside in your own yard, you can attract moths. We do that a couple of times during the summer, so people can come out and see some of the beautiful, beautiful moths that are here. And we also do evening walks for scout groups and some public programs too, because in the evening, you'll see some animals that you won't get to see during the day, including one of our favorites, the beavers, because beavers are nocturnal. Sometimes you'll see them in the twilight hours. Um, frequently, we'll hear the beavers before we see them. I had a Girl Scout troop that was out on a trail and the beaver starts slapping its tail in the water, telling us, go away, this is my spot. There's not supposed to be anyone here at night. Yeah, it was great. It was fun, especially when the girls scream. Sorry, it was fun. Oh, we've also seen and heard foxes and coyotes on the property as well. Uh, we've done some owl prowls. It's fun going out searching for owls. It's very difficult, but if you keep your eyes and ears open, you might get to find some. So we like to do some owl prowl evenings as well. Um, we like to have kids going out in the fields and learning all about insects because we might constantly think about those beautiful birds, but let's not forget how beautiful insects can be as well. So we encourage kids to not be afraid of bugs, but to appreciate them. Let's face it, we're outnumbered by insects. We should learn to get along. 
Uh, we also have some volunteers that help us with a few monitoring projects. We have nest boxes on our site, 95 nest boxes, and the volunteers will monitor those boxes. We have nests that are active of bluebirds, um, house wrens, chickadees, and tree swallows, all in these nest boxes. Um, the volunteers do come out, they monitor what's happening, they record it, we share that data. It goes on to Nest Watch and we share it with New Jersey Audubon, the New Jersey Bluebird Society, the North American Bluebird Society and Cornell University. They're recording all of this data to see if the populations of bluebirds are rising. Some of our nest boxes aren't just for the bluebirds and the chickadees, though. We do have some other boxes, too, including kestrel boxes, which is so exciting to see one of those in use. Uh, we have some vernal pools that are on the property as well. Um, any of you, I know you probably know of the one on Beekman Road. We, they, in East Brunswick, they close off Beekman Road so that the spotted salamanders can cross the street. Yes, we do care for our species of concern. And the reason that it's so important to protect those vernal pools from development is because without those vernal pools, when the amphibians are laying their eggs, then you'll see eggs like this in the water. And when the water is full of eggs, there's no fish getting into those vernal pools because these are that's only right. seasonal. If well, you and that's exactly right. I was gonna say it's seasonal. That's what makes vernal pools so special. They're there during the spring thaw and then they dry up the rest of the year. Exactly. If you had a pond that was there all year long, it's going to have fish too. And the fish will eat those eggs. The vernal pools help support those populations that are so critical and so wonderful too. Um, so, we really love our property here. A lot of people have come to see the property. They want to get certain views and special pictures. Uh, we welcome people to come out. If you're looking to do drones, this isn't quite the place because this is protected property. But if you choose to, you have to file an application to try and get permission to fly drones on the property. But um, this particular picture was worth it. Isn't that beautiful? It is beautiful. Uh, and this particular picture was just how I wanted to end my program because I love doing full moon walks, especially just when you take the time to calculate exactly when the moon is rising and you get your group down to the edge of the lake so that they can see it coming up over the water. It's quite spectacular. It's a beautiful place. I do love being here at the Plainsboro Preserve and I consider myself very fortunate. I think we're very fortunate to have you join us today. Thank you, Anne. I think what you've done is shown us that a walk in the park is really nice, but you can walk and do other things besides just walking in the park. You're, you still can be a very active, it's not just a passive recreation type of program. I will tell you, um, I got a bird feeder for Christmas from my son and on my palatial state here, the state, we managed to put the bird feeder in the front yard and I have been overwhelmed with the type of birds that I've seen <laughs> that, you know, from the woodpeckers and the nasty blue jays, I shouldn't say that the New Jersey Bluebird Society might be mad at me, but they chase everybody away. You know what I mean? And uh, I have to say, I have many people here at come to the Plainsboro Preserve who did not grow up in New Jersey. And many of them are new to the United States. And as they come, they are thrilled to see a blue jay. It is one of the most striking birds they've ever seen. And it's made me reappreciate these spectacular birds. They are beautiful. They're so common that we forget how pretty they are, but stop and watch them. They're great. They really they are, are great. And other parts that you talk about, I, I saw your YouTubes about the critter shows and everything else. You're talking about the critters it means that if you're gonna go for a nice walk in the park, it's perfect for you, your children, and maybe your parents, whatever it is, the family can do this as a, as a family outing. And like you said, there's not the Plainsboro Preserve is certainly special. The Middlesex County is special also. Middlesex County does have places that you can go, maybe not as maybe not a McCormick Park, maybe not a thousand acres, but a smaller park like a Thompson Park in, in Monroe Township, which is a big park, has a lot of beautiful places to see. It's uh, gorgeous. And my favorite thing, of course, with that park is I remember as a child going sledding on the hill. 
and I brought my own kids there too. That's a special spot. And I still, to this day, I'll go to the top of the hill there and just look out over the lake and see far into the distance. And I can see water towers that I know are in Marlboro. It's a great <laughs> spot. You're on the hill. Well, and, and, and like even in Johnson Park in New Brunswick, you can walk along the Raritan River, which is beautiful walking thing, and end up in Old Town, New Jersey, to see a, a recreation of what Jersey was like in the 18th century. So there's sites that you can see along the way beyond nature that can capture all of the beauty of Middlesex County in a lot of ways. Uh, I think uh, some of the things you pointed out today about the wild features, I don't think people know that nocturnal animals might be in their backyard at night, okay? Coyotes are prevalent throughout Middlesex County. They, and, you know, not just in the, in the parks, but they're around. And uh, as are I, I think flying squirrels, people forget we have flying squirrels around here. They're not even endangered. They're, they're relatively common. But if you're not out at night watching for them, how would you know they're there? Well, even, even one of the municipal parks in East Brunswick has, uh, has the bat houses. Okay. And I remember when they originally went in, people were like, oh, we don't want bats. Well, you don't know it. You have them. <laughs> They're all over the place. <laughs> and they, and they really do want them because those bats control the mosquito population. Yes, they do. Oh. Absolutely right. They, they they control the mosquitoes and they, they also add so much more to the environment. They don't hurt you. You know, they don't. They're not going to bother you. They're not going to attack your hair like the old wives' tales. No. And so I, I think when we're talking about some of the uh, the other treats that we can see in Middlesex County, as a Middlesex County resident, I'm sure you can appreciate uh, the open areas that the county has invested in and the municipalities have invested in. Because we do we are a densely populated state, but there's still a thousand acres of nothing that you can see except beauty of nature. That's pretty good. It's, you know, I, I think it's pretty impressive that and it's it's not so crowded either. I mean, you can go to these parks. You can go see plays in the park at Roosevelt Park in, in Edison and be with a crowd of people watching the show. And when the show is over, you can kind of disappear into the, into the openness, which is nice. You know, there are times when I come into work in the morning and I'll see 20, 30 cars in our parking lot. And I'm like, it's so crowded. 20 cars is so crowded. <laughs> you can be out hiking on the trails when there's, 50 cars in the parking lot and maybe bump into one or two people. It's that spread out. Well, I like taking my dog for a walk in the trails in, in East Brunswick and Monroe Township because uh, you're right. It, with the leash laws, you're not supposed to take your dog off the leash ever. It's against the law. But when you can get out in the middle of the woods and there's nobody around, my dog loves that. He just has a great time walking in the park. It's a, it's a fun place to go. And I enjoy it too. I mean, it gets me the exercise. I use the winter as a good excuse not to go too often, but now I think that this type of inspiration is going to get me back walking again. Nice. I use the rain as an excuse I today, but I'll figure out another excuse tomorrow. <laughs> I love going out in all seasons. By the way, feel important to uh, to make note that there are no dogs allowed at the Plainsboro Preserve. This is a all wild right. preserve, not a park, um, it, but it is. It's such a special place in winter when you can feel that wind coming off the lake on your face and your cheeks start to get red. I love that feeling. And some people, they think, oh, Ann, you're crazy. It's 15 degrees out. Why are you outside? Um, because I want to be outside. <laughs> I'm not going to stay inside because the weather isn't perfect. You just dress better. Well, two years ago, I was in Antarctica, and this next month, I'll be in Iceland. So I don't mind the cold either. Okay. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for joining us, Ann. I, I really appreciate that. Christina, do we have any questions? We actually have uh, just three questions. Um, okay. One was asked repeatedly. Uh, the number one question, when is the plant sale? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for asking. We actually just had our native plant sell for the spring where the focus is perennials. We will be hosting another one that will be going online in September. We do our, our native plant sell through our website, njaudubon.org. So we go onto the website, you find native plants and you can purchase the ones that you want. Then we set them up at the day of the sale to come and pick up. The, I think the pickup is the first weekend in October. Um, in the autumn, it's going to be focusing on trees and shrubs because that's the best time for planting native mm. trees and shrubs. And uh, then next spring, we'll be back to doing the perennials again. Very good, very good. Um, the next question is about cicadas. So this person wants to know, why do they appear in Princeton, the Windsors, 
but not necessarily in Cranberry or South Brunswick. Yes, they do. <laughs> well, they are here. They're here in force right now. Um, they come out a little bit staggered in times, but when you have the insects that have laid their eggs under the soil 17 years ago, some of those soils have been disturbed in the meantime. If those soils were disturbed, you won't have any cicadas emerging from that spot, um, whether it was developed or farmed or paved uh, those areas won't be having the emergence of insects that were there. So I really am very fortunate because here at the preserve, we have a lot of them. It's really exciting. Very good. I've been doing cicada races, by the way. I take two of them and I put them on the tree and which one gets to the branches first? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, uh, they leave their shells behind if they don't get all the way up the tree. Right, they don't get all the way up. Shells make great buttons, you know, put them on your clothes and wear them and freak out your family it's, it's <laughs> scare your children yes, I do. Or just the humming when you walk outside is, is disconcerting <laughs> like is it a ufo is it yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're not quiet either they're not bad no 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 they're not Quite and it's, it's amazing when you see any animal coming out in that volume but it's part of a strategy for survival of the species when that many insects are coming out at once they have no other defense mechanism. They don't bite, they don't sting, they're not toxic. So the birds and the smaller mammals, they're feasting on them, but there's so many insects coming out at the same time that there's plenty to go around that the animals can consume them and they're still going to have enough to reproduce and continue the species. And what's interesting, someone said, why doesn't it come every year? Well, this is part of the strategy. If it came every year, the predator's population would continue to build. Mm. This way, they're coming out every 17 years. The predators aren't going to be populating, you know, 16 years and then, okay, <laughs> next year's the big year. Let's have more young. It's the way of nature. And when we're talking about the noise, those vernal pools, when the frog peepers are all being born, they're also, they're a, they're a whole choir also making all kinds of noise all night long. They are. I sleep with my windows open just for it. Right now at home, I'm hearing the gray tree frogs are going. That's my chorus recently. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Um, well, that's actually the last question that had come in. So um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate Oh, wait, Arlene says, we don't have Brood X in East Brunswick. <laughs> you don't have what? It's, uh, it says Brood X in East Brunswick. Brood X? That's this this group of cicadas. Right. Oh, that's the type of cicadas? Yes, we do. We absolutely do. Arlene is wrong there. I've, I have had them in my backyard 17 years ago. They'll be back. Nice. But do you have them now? Or they haven't come out yet? I haven't looked. They haven't come know. out yet in my neighborhood yet they, either. They may not but I'm waiting. But we'll, we'll get them. And when I get one, I'll bring a couple up to Arlene's house. It's not a problem. Just... <laughs> Arlene, just come to the preserve. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, you know, I, I have to share, my children did go to a camp at the preserves years ago, and it was, they talk about it all the time. They, it was one of their favorite camps, and we've been there for class trips, too. Um, just the best spot to go. I wish I should make a point to go more often, because I'm not too far from you there. Um, but we want to thank you so much for, for, for keeping that preserve so, so perfect. <laughs> I've been there several times. But I do think we want to say beyond the preserves and the county parks, the trails throughout all of us, every town has a great trails that you can also take. If you want to get away from any of the actual formal parks and there's empty trails all over the place. So look on the, look on the website, look on the maps, make sure you enjoy Middlesex County and really appreciate the nature that we, we are fortunate to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and we, and we want to thank everyone also that uh, tuned in. We are going to, this is recorded. So we will post it on our website uh, later next week. It's also on our Facebook page. Um, and any of the links we discuss will also be um, on our website so that if you wanted to um, order from the plant sale we, in the fall or in the spring, you'll have the links. And thanks so much again, Anne. Have a great weekend. It's going to be gorgeous. So hopefully lots of folks will be out. I hope so. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.